Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I guess it's time to get this thing rocking and rolling. Thanks for joining us for the Missoula, Missoula Virtual Meeting Planner FAM. Um, over the next hour, we plan to take you on a virtual FAM trip and show you um, some sites of some special places to help showcase the charm and character of Missoula, Montana and why it is primed and ready to host your meetings and events. A little bit of housekeeping as we move through the presentation, feel free to type any questions you have down um, at the bottom in the Q&A section. And then at the very end of the presentation, we will go through some questions um, and answer those for you. So bring on the questions. Uh, before we jump in, let's get some introductions out of the way. I'm Debbie Picard and I am the tourism sales manager with Western Montana's Glacier Country. We are the regional destination marketing organization and management organization for Western Montana. Um, that encompasses eight counties and 75 communities and our namesake and most notable attraction Glacier National Park. Within Western Montana, we work closely with our three convention and visitor bureaus located in our anchor cities of Whitefish, Kalispell, and Missoula. Today, we're gonna to focus in on Missoula and what makes Missoula a great destination for meetings. And to help showcase that, we have our partners and colleagues from the Missoula Convention and Visitors Bureau, Destination Missoula here. Emily Ralston is the group sales associate with Destination Missoula and Kara Bartlett is the group sales manager at Destination Missoula. They are the experts in meetings in Missoula and we are excited to have them here to share their wisdom. We thought we would uh, start the presentation with a little overview video of Western Montana and some of our strongest tourism assets, including Glacier National Park, Flathead Lake, which is the largest freshwater lake west of the Mississippi. Sorry, my dog's joining my little presentation here. Um, and I take a glimpse of some luxury guest ranches, our outdoor recreation, attractions in different venues. So without further ado, let's take a look at Western Montana. Cheers to that. <laughs> so I often get asked, where is Montana? I know we all should know where the states are in the United States, but I often get asked, where is Montana and where is glacier country? Um, from the map, you can see the US and where Montana is located. And no, we are not near Alaska. And no, it is not cold 365 days a year. 
but we do have four distinct seasons. We are located in the Rocky Mountains and the Canadian border is to the north of us. Um, to the west is Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. And then to the south is Wyoming. Montana is the fourth largest state in the US. And here in Montana, we've divided the state into six tourism regions to better represent all that we have to offer in these regions. So you can see the dark blue, the lower um, map, the dark blue section is Glacier Country, and you can see where Missoula lands in Glacier Country. The map to the right shows where Glacier National Park is, and that's located in, that's the green section located near the top. Um, right below that, the blue, set, the blue water section is Flathead Lake, and then a little farther south where the green line is, that is where Missoula is located. And Missoula is the second largest city in Montana and home to the University of Montana, Bill Gris. How do you get to Missoula? Um, well, it's becoming easier every day. Missoula Montana Airport is the second busiest airport in Montana. We have 16 um, markets with direct nonstop flights. Yes, some are seasonal. It's a little dotted line there. Um, they, are, they do show seasonal, but um, we're getting new flights all the time. I think this last year, um, Missoula got added five new direct flight markets. So obviously those airlines know where people are wanting to go. We have six major airlines that fly into Missoula and um, we're gaining new flight markets all the time. So Alaska, American, Delta, United, Allegiant and Frontier are the airlines. So with all these new flights um, and airlines looking at us, Missoula needed a new airport terminal. So these are photos of the new terminal that is being built currently. The terminal uh, will be state of the art and it's under construction and uh, will be ready for completion in February of 2022, so this February. And this airport is, only lo is located only seven miles from downtown Missoula, so super easy access to downtown. <clears throat> for attendees that would rather drive to Missoula, access is via uh, Interstate 90 from Seattle, Portland, and Spokane, and Interstate 15 from Salt Lake City. We've included some drive times here to show you how close or far away, depending on how you look at it, uh, we are to some of the major metropolitan areas. So Spokane is about three hours away, Seattle and Salt Lake City at about seven and a half hours and Portland at eight and a half hours. Transportation, so getting around Missoula, transportation. Most of Missoula's convention hotels have airport shuttle vans that can be reserved in advance uh, upon your arrival. You can have transport to your convention hotel. If attendees need their own car, their cars can be reserved and picked up at um, the rental booths at the airport. I know most of you are probably learning that the rental car um, situation this year is uh, a little hairy scary, but um, hopefully uh, by the time you book a, uh, a meeting in Montana or in Missoula, well, they'll have that all figured out. Um, Missoula has transportation companies such as Beach Transportation to uh, transport groups, offsite venues, day excursions, so they have the motor coaches for all of that. There's also Uber and Lyft uh, rideshare options and cab services as well. Once in town, attendees, if they can figure out the bus routes, our mountain line buses in the city transportation is there and available and it is free. Uh, Destination Missoula can help with all of your meeting needs in town. Glacier Country Tourism is here to assist with planning pre and post meeting itineraries for those that might want to make a vacation out of their meeting. Um, or if they're looking, you're looking for a particular lodging option like a luxury guest ranch, a hot springs resort, or unique needs um, in Western Montana. We can help um, with uh, referrals for day excursions to nearby places like the National Bison Range or Garnett Ghost Town or Gray Wolf Peak Casino or golf courses, whatever your needs might be. Some competitive advantages for Montana. Montana does not have a statewide sales tax, so that shopping is free. Um, and the lodging tax is 8%, which is about half of some of our neighboring states. So it's great for attendees as well. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand this over to Emily and Kara to delve into meetings in Montana and we'll be back um, at the end to answer those questions for you. 
Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. I am Emily Ralston, and I'm the Group Sales Associate at Destination Missoula. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, I am Kara Bartlett, and I'm the Group Sales Manager with Destination Missoula. Uh, Missoula offers serene mountain views from every angle, as well as state-of-the-art meeting facilities. This next video will show you why Missoula is the perfect location to combine business and relaxation. Enjoy. Missoula can really play host to a wide variety of meetings from conventions to conferences and trade shows to associations meetings to intimate board retreats. Um, our city has 45 lodging properties with approximately 3,400 guest rooms, giving us a citywide capacity of about 5,000 people. Um, but most often we see groups um, up to about 350 and 400 attendees. Um, our three full service properties, the Hilton Garden Inn, Holiday Inn Downtown, and the Double Tree by Hilton Edgewater, uh, together offer 50,000 square feet of meeting space and 515 sleeping rooms. Um, each of these full service properties also have really close nearby properties um, for those overflow room options. Um, in all, Missoula has over 170,000 square feet of flexible meeting space um, from our conference hotels to many unique venues around town um, to the University of Montana, which has both an arena and a dedicated full service conference center on campus with just over 33,000 square feet. Um, in addition to our three full service hotels, um, Missoula has many other select properties, select service properties spanning both independent and flag hotels. Um, most hotels provide complimentary in-room Wi-Fi and air transportation, airport transportation. Um, and several properties also offer um, kind of in-town shuttles when they're not being used to um, transport guests to and from the airport. Um, with the exception of a couple of our downtown properties, um, parking is free at most of the hotels in Missoula, making it convenient for your attendees to you know, explore the city and the surrounding area. Um, and then for meetings needing hybrid technologies, um, in addition to the AV that's provided at the um, conference hotels, we have several local companies that can provide um, live streaming services and additional um, AV needs. And then for those planners who would also like more professional on the ground support, um, we can connect you to a DMC, like our partner, MNW Destinations. Um, we love to encourage groups to come in the spring and the fall um, in Missoula, as our summer months are definitely busier with leisure travelers. The weather is still wonderful in the spring with a bunch of wildflowers and green hills, and in the fall um, with our beautiful tamarack trees. And um, most of the hotels and venues will offer more competitive rates um, for rooms and for, and for venue costs um, outside of our peak summer season. 
Um, in recent years, downtown Missoula has exploded with restaurants, nightlife, and lodging options, and we have a couple exciting newcomers to downtown. Um, an AC by Marriott just opened last month. It was beautiful. Um, and then we have a boutique hotel, the Wren, that will be opening up in the fall um, that will together bring 175 more sleeping rooms to the heart of Missoula. Um, in addition, we'll also have two new extended stay properties by the spring summer of 2022 in our business district. Um, we want to take a moment to talk about COVID-19 safety. Um, this past year, of course, has been challenging, but um, Missoula um, was really adamant in priori prioritizing the health and safety of both our community members and our visitors, um, and also trying to you know, work hard to keep our local businesses open and afloat during this time. Uh, last spring, Destination Missoula helped instigate the Safer Missoula campaign, Smart, Safe, Ready, and our residents and businesses have um, really taken the safety protocols seriously, and our hotels have been instrumental in keeping Missoula safe and open to, to visitors. Um, and we are really seeing the light at the end of the tunnel with about 60% of Missoula's population now vaccinated, um, and a lot of our um, restrictions for events are easing, which is great. So, um, Kind of in addition to our conference hotels, we'll jump through some of the unique event, event spaces in Missoula. Um, in addition, uh, in, a, in downtown, we have um, a great meeting spaces. Um, we have options like the Outdoor Plaza Cares Park, which is on the right of the screen here. Um, the Wilma, which is our beautifully renovated theater. Um, the Missoula Children's Theater. There's a showroom at the new Zootown Arts Community Center. Um, and then Oak Ridge uh, Park, um, as well as intimate options like a wine cellar at Plonk the Barrel Room at Pangea um, Bar and Restaurant. And then if you head out of the city center, um, you'll find venues such as the Barn on Mullen, uh, Ten Spoon Winery, and then Kettle House Amphitheater. And no matter where you meet in Missoula, you're just gonna be surrounded by beautiful landscapes, mountains, um, and views, and access to outdoor recreation. So um, we're confident that uh, your attendees will never be bored between all of our outdoor recreation options um, and our vibrant arts and culture scene in, in Missoula. So um, three rivers and seven wilderness areas come together in Missoula, um, offering many trails to explore and a fresh mountain air for your attendees. So they can enjoy um, walking and biking our riverfront trail, um, as well as taking in the views from many hiking and mountain biking trails nearby. Um, and then we have a, a wide range of water activities from, you know, just tubing the river to um, group whitewater rafting or um, fly fishing. And then if your attendees are, are not the outdoorsy type or if they want another option, um, we, the Missoula um, downtown is such a vibrant arts and culture scene um, with art and history museums, art galleries, a bunch of live music hotspots. And then there's fun group tours like um, crafting workshops, um, an escape room, um, and private tours of our, our museums. Um, and we're really getting back to kind of a full events calendar, which is fantastic. We're really excited for it. We have our first farmer's markets opening up this Saturday. We're starting to see some concerts finally drop. Um, so it's really, it's looking up for us here this summer. Um, in addition, the culinary and beverage scene in Missoula is extraordinary. Um, from bison burgers to elk sliders to then Thai food tamale sushi, there's really, you know, something for everyone. Um, and then in addition, um, we love our, our drinks in this town. We have 14 breweries. There are three different um, distilleries, a cidery, a winery, and then a lot of local bars where you kind of will see that, um, you know, culture of, of the Missoulians. Um, and then, like Debbie said, that there's no sales tax here in Montana. So, um, you know, you can shop at a bunch of the boutiques downtown, get a lot of your made in Montana stuff, um, or you can go out to Southgate Mall, which is kind of considered the shopping destination of Western Montana. Um, and then you'll find all your creature comforts out in our business district. So there's really something for everyone. And then here at Destination Missoula, we, we want to make your planning experience as smooth and fun um, as possible and um, also make a lasting imp impression on your attendees. So um, for your planning ease, our, our staff will help with RFP distribution, site selection, offsite venue coordination, um, you know, connections to event resources like transportation, um, catering, et cetera. Um, we do an attendance promotion. We can provide visitor materials and then on the uh, ground visitor support. Um, in addition, we can help um, connect you with the health department if you have any questions about COVID safety guidelines. 
Um, and then we are also um, offer some cash incentives with our TBID grant fund. Um, and then we are launching a planner incentive fund um, later this year. So um, we are now excited to give you a little bit of an experience of what you would have in Missoula. So I will let Kara take it away with our first Missoula experience. Thanks, Emily. You know, I've lived here for 20 years and just going, watching through those slides, it just reminds me of how impressed I am with how incredibly cool and diverse Missoula is. So that was, that was fun for me too. <laughs> um, with a uh, museum or gallery around just about every corner here in Missoula, um, it, Missoula offers an art lover's playground in paradise. Uh, this next video, we talk with Laura Millen, director of the Missoula Art Museum. The MAM is located in the heart of downtown. It is free to the public and offers works by contemporary Montana artists, as well as um, exhibits of nat national and international arts. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Kara Bartlett with Destination Missoula here at the Missoula Art Museum with director Laura Millen. Thank you so much for meeting with us today. It's a pleasure to be here with you and learn more about the museum. It's a pleasure to have you. Great, thank you. Um, if you don't mind giving us some background on the Missoula Art Museum and how the MAM came to be in existence. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, it was really um, kind of a citizen groundswell. Uh, grew out of a festival of the arts um, that had been running for several years. And, um, and meanwhile, the library had moved into its new location on Main Street and this building sat empty. And uh, so it was, so it came to be with the support of the city and the county. Um, and we thrive today on that public private partnership. That's great. So, what do you uh, believe is interesting or unique about MAM that makes it, makes it so exciting for people to visit? Well, I think, um, you know, we have stayed true to our roots. Um, we are uh, a museum that is really about this place. Um, we exhibit Montana artists and artists of this region, um, as well as national and international artists, but always Montana. So you really, for the cultural tourist, there's always really excellent original Montana art to see here. And so. when you say Montana art, what specifically are you describing? Well, we, um, we're a contemporary art museum, mm -hmm. so we, we feature the art of, of this time. And our art community is rich. We, we, and I think that's really has a lot to do with the university. Missoula was always an urban community. Mm -hmm. We don't have uh, rural roots um, or agricultural roots. We have, we're an urban center. And then the University of Montana grew here and the liberal arts were based here at the university. And I think that that has, that was, became an incubator, if you will. Um, and, uh, and the arts have been, so strong here for, for a long time, um, even before the museum came about. Um, literary arts, super strong, um, music, um, and also the visual art. Do you have any permanent exhibits or are they all on rotation? They're all on rotation. Okay. Um, we do have a collection, mm -hmm. um, a, a permanent collection of art um, that reflects the region, um, but we rotate um, out of the collection and borrow from directly from artists a lot. Mm. Um, all of our exhibits are original. We don't do any canned shows, so to speak. Um, we create the curate the shows here and work um, a lot in direct collaboration with artists. Can you please describe the overall arts culture in Missoula? Yes, I think as I, as I was mentioning a minute ago, Missoula has always been really fertile ground for arts and embraced by the community. Um, and, uh, but what we've seen through the years, I think MAM has been kind of a cultural anchor. And what we've seen, uh, you know, increasingly, especially in the last decade, is the growth of more galleries, um, more art on display everywhere in the retail core, um, and um, more public art being commissioned and, and just, um, you know, music on the streets. You know, it's just that kind of place that where arts thrive. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to let our future friends of the Missoula Art Museum know? Yes, um, I want to um, point out that we um, have a 
a special focus in, in one of our galleries on the second floor that features um, the work of contemporary American Indian artists. And um, so that's a, a, been a very important focus um, for the last decade. Um, and of course, it's in part in recognition to the fact that we are on the um, ancestral land of the Salish, Kootenai, and Pandare people. We take very seriously our role um, in celebrating the contemporary culture that is alive and well today in Indian country. Does the Missoula Art Museum offer individual and group tours? We do, um, yeah. We offer um, tours uh, for groups of any size um, with the reservation. Uh, it's free of charge. Um, the museum is free of charge, wow. for that matter. Our motto is free admission, free expression. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and um, yeah, so tours are available anytime for any size group upon reservation. Mm -hmm. And do groups have an opportunity to rent out any space uh, for a private function? So yes. they're able to rent the space? Yes, we do. We make that available um, after hours, of course, um, outside of our public hours. Um, and uh, we, um, it works pretty well. I think that we do have some restrictions in terms of food and drink in the galleries, but we can accommodate a fairly good sized group um, with um, you know, a rece casual reception style mm -hmm. event. And up to about how many people can you hold for the party? I'd say 300. Oh wow. Yep. Okay. Throughout the building. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got a lot of space mm -hmm. and, um, you know, not for a seated event, but, mm -hmm. but for a reception with people moving through the spaces and, you know, food and drink positioned throughout the building. Um, it works really well. It's fabulous architecture. Mm -hmm. I was here one time for progressive reception, so there were different food and drink items in all the different um, yeah. areas of the, the museum, and that was yeah. really fun too, to be yeah. able to see the different spaces right. and hear about the Right, wander through mm -hmm. and look at the exhibits and chat and, you know, enjoy our position in downtown Missoula, right. which is right. fabulous. <laughs> Definitely. And I sh should point out, Kara, that we, of course, that we have the art park outside, um, which is a, a lovely, s discreet space that can can be fenced um, for private events so that um, alcohol and food can be served. Um, that's a requirement of our liquor license, mm -hmm. that the fencing, but it's um, possible to do that. That's wonderful. And yeah, it could be a really fun option for a summer night. I mean, that's why so many people come here. It's like outdoor spaces. Yeah, and right. Being able to enjoy the nature while they're enjoying art and a drink with their friends. Yes, and um, what brought it to mind, and we were talking about how we can also feature music, live music here on the bridges for events in the museum. And of course, the art park is fully wired up too. Oh, so great. that music can happen, performance, um, you know, Oh, lighting, yeah, a mm -hmm. lot of options. Is there um, any one thing that's particularly fascinating or interesting about the Missoula Art Museum that people would want to know about? Well, I think um, our uniqueness is, um, well, as an institution, is is um, has to do with you know very much the character of Missoula, which is a friendly, a very friendly town. Um, and we strive to be very welcoming here and friendly, but we're also um, a real sophisticated museum with um, world-class art. And I think too, of course, is our niche with, um, in terms of exhibiting American Indian artists, mostly of Montana or the region, and featuring other contemporary artists of this place, um, is, makes us unique. It's the only place you can see it, really. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for meeting with us. It's been a great pleasure to learn more about the Missoula Art Museum and look forward to having events here and welcoming our future guests. You too. <laughs> thank you. Yes. All right. So just down the street from the Missoula Art Museum, um, we have Pangea Bar and Restaurant up next. And I had the pleasure um, to go there and 
take some of their cocktails and their food um, and catch up with the general manager and co-owner of Pangea, um, which is Kyle Riggs. So please enjoy our conversation. Hi everyone, I'm Emily Ralston with Destination Missoula, and I am sitting here in the beautiful Pangea Bar and Restaurant in the heart of our downtown. And I'm here with Kyle Riggs, co-owner and general manager. So before we get too far down into the interview, let's uh, have some fun and start with a cocktail. And so I figured I would make you a really fun spring summer cocktail to start. Wonderful. So um, this is called simply the grapefruit cucumber tonic. Okay. Um, very simple, something that's really become uh, very popular in the past few years is what's called Spanish style tonics. Okay. So gin and tonics with a twist. All right, so Kyle, where are we now in the restaurant? So this is our chef's table, um, adjacent to the kitchen, obviously. Okay. Um, and this is an area where people can book it, um, and chef will custom create four course dinners. Oh, wow. um, and then there's available wine pairing as well. Okay. Um, so literally custom menus, custom wine pairing, kind of that really cool experience where chef will actually bring the dishes out himself and talk you through everything. Okay. And then um, as the wine sommelier uh, for Pangea Restaurant Group, I will also pair the wines and discuss the wines with you too. Oh, fabulous. Okay, what a unique experience. Yeah, folks. exactly. So let's um, kind of go back to the bigger picture. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about Pangea Bar and Restaurant and, and how you came to be in this space and kind of, you know, what is the aesthetic that you're trying to put forth? So the Pangea Restaurant Group uh, is a offspring of Liquid Planet Montana. Um, I, I am partners with uh, uh, Scott Billadu, Chad Morgan, and Skyla Cisco. Uh, they're the original three from Liquid Planet Montana. They were in the coffee world. Okay. Um, and they wanted to do something a little different. This was their flagship um, at that time. They wanted to do something different. It's this big, huge space. How can we utilize this? Um, so that's where I came in, and we started the Pangea Restaurant Group, and we started. We wanted to do something amazing and bring new experiences to Missoula, Montana. Um, but still be approachable. Um, a very sleek, very modern space, but um, you could, it, it's a restaurant for everybody is the way I describe it. Um, you can literally get a $4 beer and a $40 glass of wine. You can get a burger, wonderful steaks, seafood. It's very eclectic. It's, it's, it's global. And that's what Pangea is all about. Pangea was the original continent. It's the bringing of everything together. So it's everybody that's involved with the restaurant group, um, bringing all of our talents and all of our years of experience together to create something amazing and new in Missoula. Wonderful. So Kyle, you have been involved in Missoula's culinary scene for years now, and how do you see kind of Pangea fitting in to the greater culinary scene in Missoula, and how over the years have you seen it change and grow? You know, Missoula is a really cool old historic town. Great. But there was a period of time where Missoula just kind of had the same old thing. Well, Missoula's changed a lot, it's grown a lot. There's a lot of new, new faces coming into Missoula. And the culinary scene is changing a lot. And it's like kind of on work speed here right now. Um, and we're definitely part of that. We definitely want to bring those unique new experiences to Missoula. So a lot of people, you know, maybe when they think about Montana, they're thinking burgers, steaks, you know, how does, Missoula surprised people in kind of the variety of cuisine that we offer here. Well, especially in the past few years, there's been a lot of new things coming into Missoula. There's a lot of variety in Missoula. There's there's Thai food, there's sushi, there is, of course, steakhouses, but there's a lot of really amazing new concepts coming into Missoula, and the scene is really becoming fun. Um, there's a lot of variety, and there's so much going on in the way of local sourcing. Being in Missoula, we have access to a lot of really great products and good, healthy food. Right. All right. Well, it sounds like Chef Mike is cooking us up some amazing dishes in the kitchen. So let's go take a look and uh, cheers. Cheers. So Chef Mike, this looks incredible. What uh, what have you got for us? Uh, well, this is a cow soy. Um, it originates in uh, Burma. Okay. So it's very popular in northern Thailand and Laos. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a curry paste that you, you make a broth out of and you, and you simmer and it's a noodle dish. Um, and it's served with the fixins with the shallots and cilantro, pickled cucumbers and lime. Okay. And so each dish gets a, a pairing. So Kyle, can you tell us um, about the, the drink choice you have? This dish had a little spice to it. So I decided that we needed a little bubbles in our lives. Okay. So, uh, what I poured for us is the Antesh Cremant de la Mule. 
uh, from the Louis France. It's a sparkling rosé. Okay. So nice and dry. That should offset that spicy little bit in there. And bubbles are one of the most versatile things you can pair with anything. So Great. Well, I'm excited to give it a try. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's really very good. Well, this was absolutely outstanding. Thank you so much, Mike, for making this dish for us. And thanks for the wine pairing. And we'll do a little cheers here. And all right. So this space is absolutely stunning. Uh, can you tell us where we are? So you're in what we call the barrel room. Um, the name pays homage to the original occupants of this building in 1896, Garden City Bottling and Liquor Company. Okay. Um, they were in business from 1896 until 1918. Prohibition put them out of business. Okay. This is where they stored their whiskey barrels, so name, hence the name the Barrel Room. Awesome. So really the public has never been down here. It's really never been anything for the public. So we turned it into this really, really great um, event space. Um, it's, you know, as a, as a wine sommelier, it's my, it's my tasting room, but it's also our event space. So people can use this for private dinners. Um, we do winemaker dinners down here. Um, we'll do all sorts of different tastings. Um, just basically, it's a great multi-purpose room and it's super unique to Missoula. Nobody else has anything like yeah. this. Yeah. Well, this is, I mean, this is so fun breathing life into, you know, yeah. this space that was, um, you know, so historical in Missoula. Mm -hmm. So for, for groups, you said, how many, how many people can we fit in this room? You can really, in its current configuration, you can, you can see 20 people very comfortably. Um, it is expandable to get up to about 30 people. Okay. Um, you know, and if in, in more of a um, kind of cocktail party setting, you could get 40 people in here, no problem. Okay, awesome. And so you, you know, cater to groups down here. So um, do they just, you know, contact Pangea Bar and Restaurant to rent this space out? Yes, literally just go to our website, which is um, www.mtpangea.com. Okay. Um, and there's literally a tab that just says book a room. So you can book our chef's table. You can inquire about um, a, the event space down here. Um, and then we can give you lots of menu options. We do everything. We can do buffets, cocktail parties, um, plated dinners, you know, custom paired dinners. We are very versatile. We can do anything. Wow. Okay. And so for those groups that have, you know, a range of um, cuisine types or dietary restrictions, are you able to kind of cater to each of those individuals? That's something we really focus on um, at Pangea just in general is that we are very sensitive to everybody's dietary restrictions. Um, everything on the menu is clearly labeled, um, but we can accommodate any kind of dietary restriction, vegetarian, uh, gluten-free, the, the sky's the limit. We, we cater to everything. Okay, wonderful. So you have poured us this lovely glass of wine and um, I'm gonna let you kind of brag about yourself because something that's pretty, that we're lucky to have here in Missoula is you being a, a sommelier. That's so correct. Can you tell us a little bit more about your background? Yeah, I'm, I'm born and raised in Missoula, Montana. Um, gr grown up around the restaurant business um, and you know, found my way to the beverage industry. Um, and spent a lot of years obsessing you know, over craft cocktails and beer and learning these things. And uh, kind of got, you know, in a later stage of my life, I said, you know, I want to do something different. Um, and I started to seek out formal education in wine. And so I attended the Napa Valley Wine Academy. Uh, six years ago and became an advanced level sommelier in both wine and spirits of which I'm the only one from the state of Montana so I'm one step short of a master um, so something kind of fun and unique uh, that I bring to the table is this background in beverage just across the board and this expertise that I have developed in wine um, and something that really makes Pangea unique are these relationships that I have forged um, with winemakers from all over the world. Wow, well yeah, then we are especially lucky if this is, you know, this is unique to Missoula, this is unique to Montana, and mm -hmm. probably even the region. So we're so glad that you're here. Oh, thank you. Okay, so you have shown us all these wonderful spaces here at Pangea Bar and Restaurant, but I've heard that there's one more kind of secret spot that we need to check out. There is, there's one great secret, and it's something that I've wanted to do in Missoula for a long, long time, and that is open up a speakeasy. Um, so we have a wonderful space that's adjacent to the barrel room um, called Stave and Hoop. Wow, I feel like I'm like back in the Prohibition era. That would be the idea. This was such a unique space. Um, it was just asking for a speakeasy to be in it. Um, all the features, the original rock walls, people even ask, did we hire an artist to do this? No, this is all the original walls. The black on the walls from a fire in 1925. 
the concrete that you see kind of slabbed in there was how they shored the foundation back up after the fire. Okay. Um, and so this is all the original rafters, brickwork, everything. We've changed nothing. So we were just fortunate enough that Missoula gave us this amazing basement. Well, Kyle, thank you so much for your time and showing us around this amazing establishment. Thanks to Chef Mike for the great food and, and cheers, we'll be back at Pangea. Awesome, thank you. Right, so as you can see, I really got spoiled on this fam trip, on this virtual fam trip and got to uh, have lots of, lots of drinks and lots of cheers and there will be more of that coming um, with this next experience as we head over to Kettle House Brewing Company and the Kettle House Amphitheater, which is in Bonner, Montana, um, just located about 10 minutes east of Missoula on the banks of the Blackfoot River. Um, so Kettle House Brewing has a big uh, tap room and distribution center out there. And then the Kettle House Amphitheater is a world-class music venue that's also available to um, for private rentals. Um, they have a wonderful green room there. Um, they can seat a ton of people. Um, and it's just, it's a beautiful venue. So I'm excited for you all to take a peek. Hi all, I'm Emily with Destination Missoula and I'm out here in Bonner, Montana, just east of Missoula with Zach Nelson, the head brewer at Kettle House Brewing. So let's start with the basics. What is Kettle House and, and what goes on out here? Kettle House is a craft brewery that has been in Montana now, coming up on 26 years. Wow. Um, and out here in our Bonner location here is our big facility. We kind of call it the mothership. Uh, so out here we do all our canning and all our uh, kegging. Um, we do a little bit of one-off stuff and obviously some beers for the tap room. Um, but yeah, it's one of the, I think it's the second longest uh, open brewery in Montana. And, and to me, it's the, the best, obviously, I'm biased and most uh, innovative and uh, coolest brewery in the state. Well, yeah, maybe let's talk a little bit more about kind of the community. And you mentioned kind of some of the beginnings of Kettle House. And, you know, what do you think, um, you know, where does Kettle House fit in that Missoula community? Yeah, it's a pretty big staple. You know, I've only worked here eight and a half years now uh, coming up, but it even growing up, Kettle House was always known was the cool, the cool brewery, right? The place I always wanted to finally get 21 and go to was sure. the Southside Kettle House, right? <laughs> that's that's just a Missoula staple. Um, but even going back further, you know, Tim uh, O'Leary and Susie, his wife, they started the Uber Brew, you know, and that was all about the community to bring people in, show them, help them brew beer. They would do, he would, Tio would do all the work. Uh, and we call Tim O'Leary Tio, that's Tio, short. Yeah. Got it. Uh, he would do all the work for him, help him out a little bit. And then those people who came in and paid for that service would come in and bottle it, learn about craft beer and everything. So, you know, even at the core originally, that was for the community, right? To, awesome. Uh, help people learn about craft beer. And a big thing with Kettle House too has always been uh, like teaching people about craft beer too, you know, and sure. teaching the community about it as well as, you know, I think we've always are there to help support the community through whatever we can and just create these places such as out here or at the south side where it's a community place for people to go. You know, we have locals that come. And it's just a really staple place, Yeah, I guess, for Missoula people and locals that enjoy, you know, whether it's every day they come have a beer or just every weekend, but you know, it's a place they can go to and enjoy, know everyone, know everyone's names kind of thing. You know? right. So we got that kind of going on, you know, and I think that has been created, you know, being open for 25 years now. We've Absolutely. We've been able to keep that going. One thing that's really cool that I'm always proud of too is he was the first brewery in Montana to put craft beer into a can in Montana too. So that kind of changed the landscape pretty big. Absolutely, for, revolutionized it yeah, in yeah, Montana. Yeah, absolutely, you know. Um, and that was a huge thing for him was, uh, kind of follows our motto out here is to match the quality of beer with the Montana uh, outdoor experience and how great that is. And the only way to kind of do that and enjoy craft beer is how to put it in a can, right? Absolutely, so, and no better place to do that than on the banks of the Blackfoot River here. Yeah, now, for sure. We literally built this brewery to fulfill the need of Kettle House beer in all of Montana. So our goal as a company always was we needed Kettle House to be in every corner of Montana across the whole state before we would cross state lines and go anywhere else. Uh, and awesome. to do that, we had to build a bigger facility um, because the Montana drinkers uh, definitely. Uh, They're thirsty. Yeah, They're yeah, thirsty. They, yeah, yeah, and they enjoy Kettle House a lot. So it's been really, this is a really cool building that uh, was created for Montana, in my opinion, you know, to get our beer, especially cold smoke, out to 
all of the Montana people yeah. and tourists wherever they may go. So yeah, I love that that Montana first approach and yep. then welcoming visitors as they come to the state. Absolutely, and I think it's a big thing that why Montana is in general has so many great breweries, you know, and it is kind of like a culture here sure. in Missoula and across Montana, you know, it's multiple times Missoula itself or Bozeman has been named one of the top destinations for craft beer drinkers, you know, and then on top of that, you throw in the outdoors and the recreation that we have. And I feel like it's just a beer drinker's paradise. You Absolutely. Know, craft beer does go hand in hand. I believe personally with outdoor activities, you know, I love to fly fish and have a craft beer. I love to kayak and have a craft beer. I love to hike and have a craft yep. beer. It seems like it's just part of what the part of what this area is all about. And so, and I think a lot of breweries across the whole state have put that focus in the same thing and understand that that's what it is. And the quality of beer across the whole state is amazing. Um, and I think that's been uh, really helped Montana and everyone knows that craft beer tourism is a thing here now, yeah. which is great. So it's a testament to all the breweries across the whole state. And I'm really, really proud of what the craft industry has done in Montana uh, with all that. Great. Yeah. So this is such an amazing facility, both the you know indoor space with the tap room and then outdoors. Um, I'm imagining you get you know some groups that come in and want to utilize this space. Yeah, absolutely. This uh, tap room specifically was kind of built with all the space and the outside area um, to want to bring in more groups, you know, bring in more people wanting to do events. We've had film fest uh, people come out here before. We've had politicians present stuff out here before. We had straight six archery come out and do presentations, fish and wildlife, birthday parties. I mean, really the list can go on and on of any group that wants to come do something. We are open to having you out here to come enjoy beer, of course, uh, as this tap room is here, it's bring your own food if you want. Sometimes we do have food trucks, but you know, a lot of those bring a couple pizzas out and have, have a party. We've had some even uh, businesses in town have had their customer appreciation parties out here uh, and had food and stuff for everyone and done great. that. So it's been really cool. Yeah, and the space is great, obviously, and it's beautiful. And we're, we love having that and helping the community in that nature too with all those other businesses. So Great. Yeah, it's such a nice spot to have flexible space and that you could bring in a caterer and they can do their own thing and they can spill outside. It just seems, yeah, such a friendly spot. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's always tons of photo opportunities too out here on the river <laughs> and outside too. So everyone always likes that when they're doing some kind of promotional thing. They can set up outside and get some great pictures and really, really showcases Kettle House and Montana and Missoula, right? So, great. Yeah. So if you ever have groups that are interested in being out here, you know, what do they have to do to get to this spot? Yeah, to come out here, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, we have really not, we have not said no to many groups because we want groups of people out here. We want to help the community in that nature. And I mean, all you got to do is come down and either talk to whoever's behind the bar or call Kettle House or email Kettle House and ask. And, you know, we'll ask for some logistical questions and everything. But, you know, it's it's something we want out here and to have groups and get more people out here to come see this beautiful space and enjoy our craft beer. Great. We love simple. Yeah. <laughs> I'll uh, pour you a cold smoke scotch ale here, which is our number one selling craft beer here at Kettle House and also one of the best selling craft beers in all of Montana. Um, this beer is basically the engine that drives the train that is Kettle House. But uh, yeah, it's you can find it anywhere across the whole state of Montana, eight packs and four packs. So Awesome. This was like one of my, my first beers that I had from Kettle House. And yep. it, Still tastes as good as it did yeah, the first time. Yep, I think that's everyone's first craft beer almost in the state, so. Yeah. All right, well, we're out here on just a beautiful day. Let's cheers to that. Absolutely. And uh, so we are on the banks of the Blackfoot River out here in Bonner. What can you tell me about, you know, Kettle House craft beer and outdoor recreation in Montana and Missoula? Yeah, absolutely. Kettle House, a lot of Kettle House's core values are based off of what the outdoor recreation is here in Montana. Uh, like I've said before, uh, our motto has always been matching uh, the quality of our craft beer with the quality of the Montana outdoor experience, which we truly do think is world class. I mean, look at this right here. We're on this river. I, we've literally had floaters float by on rafts, pull up on the bank, get up here really quick, grab some beers and head back. Um, I fly fished off the bank here as as many, many other uh, employees and people who come to have beers, you know, fly fish really quick, have a few beers. Yeah. I just, and we make a variety of beers that I think match the variety of 
outdoor recreating that there is through all the seasons here in Montana. So can you share with us kind of a little known fact about Kettle House Brewing? Yeah, there's obviously many of them, but one that I'm really and always happy to share and love hearing the story of is uh, at the South Side, the first brew house that we ever got and started brewing was a 15 barrel brew house. Uh, and we got that from Bayern University here in Missoula as well. Uh, but how we got that is the great part of the story and that Tim traded a motorcycle to get that brewery. So it's kind of cool that everything we have now came from a motorcycle swap and myself learned to brew on that system. All of our brewers that I have here, most of them learned to brew on that system. And uh, yeah, it's still at the South side, which is always great to see. And uh, remember that everything started with that brew house and you know, a motorcycle. So yeah, that's, that's, so that's really great. Uh, yeah, and then another cool fact that we have out here um, is that we have this amazing Kettle House Amphitheater uh, right, right in front of us over there. And it's a world-class venue. And it's so cool that you get to see the venue from our tap room. Uh, for employees, it's always been cool. We always get to hear the sound check, uh, hear the artists play. And that venue itself, I truly believe, matches the world-class beer that we make, the world-class outdoor uh, activities that are here in Montana. And it's definitely a world-class uh, music venue that I like to call the Red Rocks of the Mountains. Nice, yeah. Well, it's a stunning amphitheater. And, you know, we've gotten some really amazing artists that have come through. And they also, you know, get to experience this beautiful location and the outdoor recreation here in Montana. Yeah, absolutely. It's there's been some great stories of acts that have floated the Blackfoot River down to the venue before the show, or if they got here a day early, uh, enjoyed what Montana has to offer, especially the Missoula area because it's right here at their doorsteps. And us for Kettle House too, we really love that the artists get to enjoy our Kettle House beer and yeah. all the thousands of people that travel from all over to come see these acts that we get uh, get to enjoy the Kettle House beer as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, Zach, thanks so much for having us out here and teaching us about the, the Kettle House and kind of showing off all the amazing beauty around here. And uh, hopefully we'll be working here together with some meeting planners who want to bring in their gro groups and show off this beautiful area and uh, have another place to meet in Montana. Yeah, absolutely. We're yeah. looking forward to it. Cheers. Cheers. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed kind of that little small taste of all the amazing things that Missoula has to offer and kind of the fun and unique um, group meeting spaces that we have here in town. And, and you know, as you can see, we're really just a, a friendly community, welcoming community, and we all have, you know, these great stories to tell and are just so excited to share that with, um, with all the visitors that come through Missoula. So um, thank you for being here with us on this virtual fam, but um, we are are hoping that, you know, kind of by next spring that we'll be able to bring back our kind of in-person um, meeting planner fam. So please keep in touch with us, um, you know, if you want to be involved in that and be on kind of the lookout when we start putting that out there. Um, and then you're always welcome 
to you know submit your RFP, um, you can go to missoulameetings.com and you can um, submit your RFP there digitally or feel free to just contact um, myself or Kara um, if you have any questions um, about Missoula or our spaces here and we would, we would love to work with you and see you here in Missoula. Well, thank you, Emily, and thank you, Kara. We are going to welcome um, some of our uh, people that you saw in some of the videos. We've got Kyle Riggs from Pangea and Carrie Powers from the Missoula Art Museum and Tiffany Lutke from Kettle House. So they will join us if you have any questions specifically for them. Did wanna let everybody know that we will be um, pulling a winner for an in-person fam hopefully next spring um, from everybody that attended from this. So we will let that person know um, within the next coming week or so. Um, so we do have some questions and let me get to them and see if our, um, our group of panelists can answer them. So one of them, um, outdoor spaces and unique reception areas. Emily and Kara, do you want to take that? Yeah. I mean, we saw some of that in the video, but. Yes, and so we do have, you know, more areas, um, you know, I mentioned Kara's Park, um, and that is right in downtown. It's kind of our outdoor plaza right next to the river. Um, it's, a, it's a huge space. Um, we have um, out to lunch. Um, we have food trucks that come there in the lunchtime and at dinner um, in the summertime, and that's just a wonderful space. Um, really flexible. Um, even in the kind of the spring and the fall, you're able to kind of bring down the panels on the side of the big pavilion. Um, so you can put some heaters in there. Um, gosh, we have Ten Spoon Winery, which is just in the gorgeous Rattlesnake Valley of Missoula. Um, and they do, you know, receptions, weddings, um, music out there. Um, also another flexible space um, where you can bring in catering. They sometimes have a food truck out there that does wood-fired pizzas. Um, we have the barn on Mullen, which is kind of on the south side of Missoula, and they have a beautiful space out there. They're kind of adjacent to one of our, um, I think, the only Lynx golf course in Missoula. Um, so it's a wonderful location out there and really kind of rustic elegance that you get at the barn on Mullen. So we have many, many outdoor options and happy to, happy to share more. And if you guys have specific questions about, um, you know, groups or group sizes and what those events um, can hold, I'm happy to, happy to share those offline. Great. Another question. I'm sure this is in regards to COVID right now. How are food and beverage handled currently? Yeah, I can take that one as, as well. Um, you know, the, the health department in Missoula is, is fabulous. They've done such a good job in kind of leading our community um, and keeping us all safe. Um, food and beverage, um, a lot of people are, you know, they're moving away from that buffet style um, just to make sure that they're limiting kind of those areas where a lot of people are gathering. You know, they're still, they're being very good about spacing folks. I saw another question pop up through the chat about, you know, is six feet still, um, you know, how they spacing people in meeting rooms, you know, because six feet is still kind of that standard here in Missoula um, until we really, you know, hear otherwise on being a little bit closer, but all of our, um, our meeting, um, our conference hotels, their staff are really great about being flexible and, and knowing what your group wants and what um, the safety level um, that that requires. Um, so, I mean, it, we're really, it's, um, it's state of the art, high quality. You're gonna have people who really care about your attendees safety. So, um, and we'll just kind of keep you guys updated as those things change. Um, we work very closely with all of our event venues and conference hotels as, as well as the health department. Great. Uh, there was a question, are guided tours available around Missoula? There are some, <clears throat> excuse me, some guided tours available through our downtown, um, Missoula Downtown Partnership. It's called the Missoula Unseen um, Tour, and they have a pretty com a comprehensive web website that shows the calendars and the availability. They are limited and they sell out very fast. Everybody is always curious to see kind of the behind the curtain um, scene of the, the downtown Missoula area. Uh, but there are, are also, you know, such like at the Missoula Art Museum, you could have a guided tour there. You could make a reservation for something like that. Um, there are also kind of self-guided tours um, that we have a lot of information at Destination Missoula. 
um, where you can show you the historical building, you take yourself around to the historical buildings or the art museums. Um, the University of Montana has a really great self-guided um, museum tour that takes you all around our gorgeous campus. Um, so you can just always get in touch with destinationmissoula.com and, and uh, we'll help you out with those guided tours and get you in touch with the right people. All right, we'll do, we have time for, I think, one more question. How are the hotels in Missoula handling attrition? Yeah, I can take that one. You know, our hotels have been extremely um, friendly towards planners and groups. And throughout this time, they know that it's, you know, it's been such a challenge with cancellations and really, you know, kind of waiting and seeing, right? If things are changing so quickly, um, you know, and now with vaccinations and kind of these requirements that are moving around. So, um, you know, I can't say generally everyone's following the exact same rules can make, you know, change from hotel to hotel, but, but really they're being very friendly towards groups with um, cancellation and attrition at this time. Excellent. Well, we want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, again, if you have questions, um, you can reach out to myself at Western Montana's Glacier Country, um, Emily or Kara at Destination Missoula. We are here to help and answer and guide you into uh, whatever you might need for your groups coming here to Montana. Um, we look forward to working with you and we appreciate you spending the last hour with us. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.